<coughs> Good afternoon. Um, the subject of my presentation concerns also the carrot fly Psylla rosae, which uh, can cause severe economic losses in Apiace crops. So, to protect their crops against Psylla rosae, producers can use insect proof nets or chemical products. But in recent years, there has also been an increasing interest in biological control through habitat conservation methods, which are supposed to prevent pest outbreaks and to keep pest population at low levels. The aim of such methods is to attract, to maintain, and to amplify predators and parasitoid uh, arthropods close to the crops by preserving or by setting up specific uh, seminatural structures in field edges. The effect of such structures on the colonization of Apiacea crops by Psylla rosae and some fly natural enemies such as Araneidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae was studied in the Biodivleg project carried out by the CTFL from 2009 to 2011. The objective of this project was first to characterize fly natural enemy population in Apiacea crops, then to study interactions between carrot fly and fly natural enemies, and third, to study the influence of high density seminatural structures such as hedges or wooden borders set up in field edges on Apiacea crop colonization by the carrot fly and its natural enemies. For that purpose, a network of conventional Apiacea fields was built. Each field of this network was characterized according to the nature of its edges, which was, de which was described by, by means of a software called DEXI, and fields surrounded with hedges or wooden borders close to the crops were called DEXI plus fields, and fields surrounded with low-density seminatural structures such as hedges or wooden borders were called control fields. Pairs of fields were then built by matching fields very similar for the part of their geographical, biophysical, and technical features, but very different as far as the nature of field edges was concerned. In each field, of this network, a sampling zone was set up at 25 meters of an edge, from an edge, and in this sampling zone, carrot fly egg density, as well as Araneidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae activity density were measured at several sampling dates during oviposition periods only. In some fields, activity density of Araneidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae were also measured simultaneously in field edges. And at harvest, fly hole incidence was estimated in each sampling zone, and in some fields only, the parasitism structure of carrot fly population was also determined. We study then the correlations between all these variables by means of a test called Spearman test, and when it was possible, Correlation between activity density of Araneidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae were also um, measured in fields on one hand and in field edges on the other hand were also studied. <coughs> After that, fly egg density, activity density of Araneidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae, um, as well as fly all incidence at harvest, were compared between the Dexiplus fields and the control ones by means of the Wilcoxon test and the sign test for two matched samples. The first finding get from this study, and that I would like to show you now, is the result of the correlation analysis we did first. And in this table here, you can see the, corre the correlation coefficient resulting from the Spearman test. These coefficients show that Araneidae activity density in Apiace fields is significantly and negatively correlated with carrot fly egg density there. 
It is the same for Staphylinidae and Curabidae, but for these arthropods, the correlation is negative. Uh, positive, sorry. The graph on the top right of this slide shows thus that higher is a Ranaidae activity density mentioned on the x-axis, lower is fly egg density that is mentioned on the y-axis. In the same way, the graph on the bottom right of this slide shows that Staphylinidae activity density increases when fly egg density is rising. And these results are very interesting because they suggest that Araneidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae populations could have an action of predation toward carrot fly eggs. Among all carrot fly natural enemies, egg predators are very useful for apiacy production because fly hole incidence and consequently the commercial yield is correlated in a significant way with fly egg density during oviposition periods. This correlation, which is nonlinear, is well illustrated by the graph on this slide, where fly hole incidence is mentioned on the y-axis and fly egg density on the x-axis. On this graph, you can see easily that higher is fly egg density, higher is fly hole incidence at harvest. <clears throat> on this slide now, we can see yet that Araneidae, Staphylindae, and Curabidae activity density measured in fields on one hand and in field edges on the other hand are significantly and positively correlated. From the graph on the top right of the slide, we can see that Araneidae activity density in Apiacy fields, which is mentioned on the x-axis, increases proportionally with Araneidae activity density in field edges, which is mentioned on the y-axis. And the graph on the bottom right of the slide shows the same pattern for, for Staphylinidae, as well as the one on the bottom left, as far as Carabidae are concerned. Again, these results are of significant import importance because they suppose that it would be possible to increase beneficial arthropods in apiacy fields just by increasing their population in field edges. And this perspective brings us to the next results I would like to show you now, which are related to the comparison of fly natural enemy activity between the Dexiplus fields and the control ones. The graph on this slide shows <clears throat> for each pair of fields built as described before and the name of which are mentioned on the x-axis, the difference between the Dexiplus field and the control one as far as a Raneide activity density, which is mentioned on the y-axis, is concerned. For each pair of fields, the white plot here is the activity density measured in the Dexiplus field and the dark plot is the activity density measured in the control field. On this graph, pairs of fields are sorted into the difference between the Dexiplus field and the control one. All pairs of fields for which this difference is positive are on the left part of the graph, and all pairs of fields for which this difference between the Dexiplus field and the control one is negative are on the right part of the graph. From this graph, three parameters were calculated to compare an Araneide activity density between the Dexiplus fields and the control ones. And these parameters are presented in the table just above the graph. The first one of these parameters is the mean ratio between the Dexiplus field and the control field called DC ratio. The second parameter is the total of the positive or negative differences between the Dexiplus fields and the control one. On the graph, the total of the positive differences is corresponding to the blue area, and the total of the negative differences is corresponding to the orange area. The third and last par parameter computed here is the occurrence of these positive or negative differences between the two kinds of fields studied here. As can be inferred from this table, the DC ratio for RNAID is close to one, 
And the statistical analysis didn't show any significant differences between the RNA, RNA ID activity measured in the DEXI plus fields and that one measured in the control fields. Despite of this, it appears that RNA ID activity density might be higher in the control fields than in the DEXI plus ones because the total of the negative differences between the two fields that is the blue area, is higher than the total of the positive differences between the two kinds of fields, that is the orange area. In contrast, it can be seen from the data provided on this slide that staphylinidae activity density is likely higher in the Dixie plus fields than in the control ones with a DC ratio close to 1.3. In addition, you can see that the, the total of the positive differences between the DXC plus fields and the control ones is close to 300, while the total of the negative differences is barely higher than 200. Moreover, staphylinidae activity density is higher in the DXC plus field than in the control one. In 29% of cases, while it is the opposite in only 18% of cases. And you can see that in the table, uh, you can see in the table that this seems even truer as far as Aleucara species are concerned. Nevertheless, from a statistical point of view, stat staphylinidae activity density was not significantly different between the Dexi plus fields and the control ones, except as far as Aleokawa species were concerned, when the sign test was used. Like for Staphylinidae, Kurabide activity density could be probably higher in the Dexi plus fields than in the control ones, even if the statistical analysis doesn't show any significant differences between the two kinds of fields. However, the effect of field ages is likely to vary according to Carabidae species. For instance, Arpalinae and Trachinae subfamilies appear to be very active in the Dexi plus fields, while Pterostichinae and Platininae seem indifferent to the nature of field ages. In this same way, fly egg density that you can see on the graph on the bottom left on, of uh, this slide, and fly hole incidence. You can see that on the graph on the bottom right of this slide, measured in the Dexi plus field and in the control field for, of each pair of fields are presented here. The results presented here clearly show that fly egg density is significantly higher in the Dexi plus field than in the control ones. For this variable, the DC ratio is close to 1.5, and the total of the positive differences between the Dexi plus fields and the control ones, that is the uh, red area on the graph, is equal to 39, while the total of the negative differences, that is the uh, green area on the graph, is only equal to 6. Moreover, fly egg density is higher in the Dexi plus field than in the control one in 27% of cases, what it is the opposite in only 9% of cases. And it is exactly the same as far as fly hole incidence is concerned because fly hole incidence is three times higher in the Dexi plus field than in the control ones and uh, fly hole incidence is higher in the Dixie plus field than in the control one in 27% of cases, while it is the opposite in only 8% of cases. In summary, <clears throat> the data collected during this three-year field study provide an insight into the way by which the carrot fly Psyllawesi and its possible natural enemies interact each other in Apliase fields and into how their population might be influenced by the physical nature of field ages. One of the most striking results of this study 
is that Arenaidae, Staphylinidae, and Crabidae may probably have an action of predation towards carrot fly population because their activity density is significantly correlated with fly egg density during oviposition periods. Nevertheless, existence of a correlation between two variables doesn't mean necessarily a causal relationship, and this hypothesis needs, therefore, to be confirmed, for instance, by searching for, and if possible, by quantifying carrot fly molecular markers in the digestive system of Aranidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae collected in Apiacy fields. Another important finding of this study is that hedges or wooden borders favor significantly carrot fly egg laying in the adjacent fields. This result seems to be consistent with other research. We found that a lot of fly species complete a large part of their life cycle close to the crops in places where they can find protection and resources for egg production. In the same way, Activity density of Staphylinidae and Curabidae species appears to be higher in Apiacy fields surrounded with hedges or wooden borders than in the other kinds of fields. This result could be explained by a direct effect of hedges or wooden borders, which may attract these species and then favor their shifting in the adjacent fields in a woody passive way. However, it is our view that Staphylinidae and Curabidae are likely more active in fields surrounded with hedges or wooden borders, firstly because carrot fly eggs density is higher there than in the other kinds of fields. And to finish, I would like to highlight that this study showed also that fly hole incidence at harvest is higher in fields surrounded with hedges or wooden borders than in the other ones. And this is consistent with the fact that fly hole incidence is positively and strongly correlated with fly egg density, which is itself favored by hedges or wooden borders, borders as discussed above. On the other hand, this result suggests that under heavy pest outbreak, the Arenidae, Staphylinidae, and Curabidae action of predation toward carrot fly eggs would probably not be sufficient to balance the positive effect of hedges or wooden borders on fly egg density. If, if that were the case, it could be believed that fly hole incidence at harvest would be equivalent or even lower in fields surrounded with hedges or wooden borders than in the other ones, even though carrot fly eggs are more numerous in this field. I thank you very much for your attention, Eve. And uh, if you have some question, I am here. Yes. And I would like also to thank, uh, you, to thank uh, everybody who participated f to this uh, project and uh, a lot of persons participated. <laughs> thank you, Sébastien. <coughs> have you some questions? So, my name is Ulf Nilsson from the Universe Agriculture University in Sweden. My question is, the carrot fly, does that eat nectar in field? Do you know that? Do they need some kind of extra energy to lay more eggs? Is that the reason why they prefer these uh, hedges? Or? I think so, but I'm not completely sure. But all the results we get in this study suggest that strongly that because in the hedges or wooden borders we studied uh, there were such nectar or pollens and we think that they need that for egg production yes and uh, to uh, check that uh, we would like after this project to to build a, to build a new project um, with the aim to analyze the uh, digestive content of uh, carrot fly to see if yes or not uh, this fly uh, consume uh, pollen or nectar we have around our carrot flies our carrot uh, crops 